Hello everyone, welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. Today we are extending our Critical Role Breakdown and Lore series by covering the life and story of one of my favorite characters in Critical Role, Percy Dorolo. Obviously this video is going to contain spoilers for Campaign 1's and Legend of Vox Machina, so consider yourself warned. As always, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos, like our Arms the Betrayer video, the Betrayer Gods Explained video, or our Who Are the Prime Deities video. Okay, let's get right into it, because this video, gonna be long. Percival Frederick Stein von Musel Kowalski de Rolo III, or Percy for short, the inventors of firearms and members of Vox Machina. Percy was born to the de Rolo family, the rulers of the city of Whitestone, a mountain city in the north of the continent of Tal'Dorei. Percy, along with his six siblings, would grow up in this quiet city. A smart, bright young man with short brown hair and glasses, Percy would spend most of his youth in his studies and tinkering on various mechanical constructions. Percy, the gunslinger fighter, would become a key member of Vox Machina the Adventuring Group. Known for his quick mind and quicker shot, Percy would be Vox Machina's primary range damage dealer, as well as oftentimes voice of the party. Being the inventor of firearms in Exandria, Percy's creations would change warfare forever. Percy's notable items include many of his tinkered creations, such as his pistol, his rifle, an electric gauntlet named Diplomacy, as well he wields one of the most powerful vestiges of the Divergent, the Cloak Cabal's Ruin. Fun fact, according to the Critical Role Wiki, Percy holds the record for highest amount of damage in a single turn with a whopping 249. Yeah, don't even ask me how. Around five years before the events of Campaign 1, a group of nobles known as the Briarwoods came to Whitestone. The couple would instigate a coup, killing the entire Dorolo family, except for Percy and his sister Cassandra. The two would be tortured by one of the Briarwoods' agents, the cruel Dr. Anna Ripley, turning Percy's hair to white from the trauma. After enduring much torture, Percy and his sister Cassandra would manage to escape, being pursued in the woods outside of Whitestone. Percy would escape, but Cassandra would take an arrow to the knee, leaving her behind. Percy, in a panic, would leave his sister behind, who he presumed dead. Percy would wander Exandria, making his way south until one day he had a dream. A roaring black cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. It offered him a tool in which to take his revenge. That morning, Percy awoke with a design in his mind. A design for a weapon unlike the world of Exandria had ever seen. A mechanical and magical wonder. Percy would design the first firearm seen in Exandria. The List, or known as the Pepper Box, a small pistol with six barrels, five of which bear the names of the conspirators who killed his family. Unbeknownst to Percy the night he had this dream, he made a deal with a shadow demon named Orthax, who provided him with the means to carry out his revenge. Sometime later, Percy would, would find himself jailed in a prison called the Umbra Hills after he had been falsely accused of being the leader of a cult and for attempting to murder Dr. Ripley. He would eventually be freed by Scanlan, Pike, and Keyleth, who were looking for their friend Grog. From here, Percy would leave with them, eventually joining this group known as Vox Machina. After much adventuring, the party would travel to the city of Emon, the capital city of Tal'Dorei. There, they would discover that the king and sovereign of the city, Uriel Tal'Dorei, has been acting strange along with some of his council members, General Krieg specifically. The group investigate the general's home, where they discover a teleportation circle that takes them to a hoard of treasure somewhere far in the mountain. Suddenly, General Krieg appears, transforming himself into a great white dragon, Brimscythe. Fox Machina would endure a tough battle, but managed to slay this dragon. Once returning to Amon, they would confront Uriel and his possessed family in the throne room. They would banish the shadows in their body. The throne would then crack, revealing the true threat, a Glabrazu or treachery demon. Fox Machina would defeat this demon, but not before it cut down their gnome cleric, Pike Trickfoot. The party managed to resurrect her and restore the souls of the family to their bodies. Uriel, no longer under the influence of the demon, rewards Vox Machina for the service to his family by appointing them members of the Tal'Dorei Council and constructing a keep in their honor. During this time, Percy would construct a new, large, high-powered rifle known as Bad News. Sometime later, Vox Machina would be hired by the Arcanist Alora Vysorin to journey into the Underdark to find her friend, the paladin Lady Kima of Vord. Lady Kima had been sent visions from her god Bahamut of a great evil that had been gathering down in the Underdark. The party would return, having learned this great evil was a beholder empowered with the Horn of Orcus, a great evil item. They would defeat this beholder named Kavarn with the help of Lady Kima, saving her and coming back to Iman. Some time within pass, Percy would learn in a conversation with Sovereign Uriel that the Briarwoods had recently come to Iman to try and establish a relationship with Tal'Dorei. At this time, it seems the rest of the world knows little of the Briarwoods' horrible deeds and the coup in Whitestone. 
After returning from a short adventure to Vasselheim, Vox Machina would be greeted by the Lord of Spies for Uriel, Seeker Assum. Assume would inform the party that the Briarwoods would be attending a dinner very recently at the palace. He would like for Percy and Vox Machina to attend this dinner to keep an eye on the Briarwoods and he does not trust them. Over the years, Seeker Assume has sent many operatives to investigate the Briarwoods, but each resigned the mission. Later that night, Percy would explain to his party members the horrors of his past and of Silas and Delilah. Vox Machina would attend this dinner. There, Silas and Delilah would tell their false version of events with the Dorolos. Vax would be caught snooping around in their room, barely managing to escape with his life. He would alert his fellow party members to the danger with the code word, Jenga. A battle would erupt in the palace courtyard as Percy would charge the couple, firing shots, screaming out Silas's name. Silas, then revealed to be a vampire, would remark to his wife that the pup yet lives. The two managed to escape from Iman, leaving their carriage driver behind. Percy would then torture this driver for information, blowing off his fingers, but learning nothing. On their way back to the Castle Grayskull, they would be ambushed by a group of mercenaries. In one of the best scenes of all of Critical Role, Percy would kill their leader, unloading six shots into his chest, yelling, You fool! Your soul is forfeit! Die! 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 God, this sh is actually so good. Taliesin was on one throughout this whole entire arc. The next day, the party would again interrogate the carriage driver, learning of the horrors that would have taken place in the city. And the Briarwoods have planned to use a set of ancient ruins beneath the city to construct some sort of ritual. Over the next few days, the party would travel to Whitestone. On their path there, the world would begin to grow dark and unfamiliar. Unnatural fog clung to the forest surrounding Whitestone. The city was dark and quiet, the townspeople afraid to leave their homes. Patrolling the streets were large, undead giants. Vox Machina would sneak into the city with the goal of eliminating the Briarwoods' allies and sparking a rebellion among the townspeople. First, Vox Machina infiltrated the home of Stern Stonefell. When Percy fired upon Stern Stonefell, his name began to glow on the barrel of the weapon, while black smoke slowly billowed from Percy's body. He would then don his gas mask and be completely enveloped in the smoke by the time Sir Stonefell lay dead on the floor. As Stonefell died, his name would magically vanish from the barrel of the list. Percy, in a rage, would torture one of Carrion's lackeys, burning the Dorolo crest into his forehead. Vax would warn Percy that he was heading down a dark path, and he would not hesitate should he turn his anger onto the party. The party then questioned Percy about this mysterious smoke. He would explain to them the dream of the entity who offered him the key to his revenge in exchange for the souls he took with the weapon. At this point, though, Percy believes it was all a dream. It was all a dream! Since entering the city, Percy had developed a strange cough, as well his skin would appear even paler than before, and he was more prone to violence. Percy admits to his friends that he's not sure if he trusts himself at this point. Later that day, Percy reveals himself to his late father's friend, Archibald Desney, who was portrayed as Percy's childhood friend in The Legend of Vox Machina show. Upon seeing Percy, Archibald would explain, now two Dorolos live, revealing to Percy that his sister Cassandra is in fact alive. The next day, Vox Machina would plan a two-pronged attack against two more of the Briarwood's minions. Ganwood would lead a solo attack on Duke Vedmire's home, while the rest of the party would surprise attack the vampire Count Tyleri. A great battle would ensue as Vox Machina would walk into a trap in Tyleri's home. During the battle, Percy's eyes would turn a cold black while his body began to billow smoke. After the fight, Vex would corner Percy, looking into his eyes and asking if he was alright. Percy reassured her he was okay, but the party has become wary of Percy and his anger. Having gathered a group of rebels rallied under the Dorolo name, Vox Machina planned to assault the castle Whitestone. There, they would face a horde of skeletons. As it seems they were being overwhelmed, they would be saved by Pipe Trickfoot, who destroys the horde of skeletons with her holy magic. They make their way through the streets, clearing undead giants. In an epic round of combat, Percy pulls out his high-powered rifle, Bad News, firing three shots, nearly killing one of the undead giants by himself. With the giants cleared, Percy leads them to a secret tunnel that would take them into the dungeons of Whitestone. There, they discover a strange old woman who is revealed to be Dr. Anna Ripley in magical disguise. Ripley, not having many options, explains that she was the chief scientific designer for the Briarwoods project beneath the city involving the Ziggurat, an ancient temple of Ayun that sank beneath the city in the Calamity. The party presses her on what the purpose of these experiments were, but she explains she was only involved in the construction and not privy to the details. After her work was finished, she tried to leave Whitestone, but was imprisoned by the Briarwoods. Percy and the party agreed to make a deal with her. In exchange for her freedom, she will lead them to Cassandra and explain everything she knows about the Briarwoods' plan. Allison really was on one through these episodes. It's so fun going back and watching them there. There were so many good gun liners like this one. You really are the luckiest person in Whitestone because you're at the bottom of my list. They take Ripley to gather her things. There they see she has successfully constructed her own version of Percy's firearm. 
making for a very awkward encounter. As they push through the castle, Vax stumbles into a trap set by Professor Anders, who is holding Cassandra at knife point. In horror, Vax watches as Anders slits Cassandra's throat, suits of armor becoming animated throughout the room. A fierce battle rings out. Fox Machina managed to overcome Anders and saving Cassandra in the process. As the group, now including Cassandra, make their way deeper under Whitestone, she informs them how dangerous the Briarwood couple are and that they serve someone known as the Whispered One. They make their way into an odd chamber. They search through, Cassandra finding and pressing a hidden button. Suddenly, residuum doors close around the party, separating them from Cassandra and trapping them inside. Behind her, the Briarwoods walk out. Cassandra declares that Percy's sister died the day those arrows hit her. She's a Briarwood now, as the chamber begins to fill with acid. After much struggling and much acid damage, the party managed to escape this acid distillery, making their way deeper underground following the Briarwoods. They see the large temple known as the Ziggurat. As they're walking, Percy notices his pistol glowing. He looks down to find the name Cassandra to roll well etched into the empty barrel. The party catch up to the Briarwoods atop the Ziggurat. Percy charges forward, donning his mask as smoke billows out from him. He shouts out Silas's name, the cue for the rest of the party to unleash their surprise attack. The fighting rings out. Percy finds himself face to face with the vampire lord. Before he can be overwhelmed, Keyless runs forward, hugging Silas and casting Sunbeam, greatly injuring him. Delilah shuts out Silas, the ritual. As Silas begins to run towards his wife, Keyless turns, blasting him with a final sunbeam. Delilah, watching the love of her life destroyed in front of her, screams out, You can't! I broke the world for us! Referring to the dark ritual she used to turn him into a vampire. Delilah dimensions doors inside the room at the top of the ziggurat, intent on finishing this unknown ritual. The party are unable to stop her as she finishes the ritual, spilling her blood on a black orb that begins to spin until the orb suddenly shrinks. She cries out no as it seems the ritual has failed. Fox Machina leaving the ziggurat, taking Delilah with them. Fox Machina would later come to learn that the couple were followers of the betrayer god Vecna, the Whispered One, and the ritual here in the ziggurat was somehow related to him. Percy suddenly feels a pull inside him to kill her, and then his sister. Percy would aim his gun back and forth between his sister and Delilah, struggling to regain control. He would then point the gun at his own head. Suddenly, the being who had struck the bargain with Percy, the shadow demon Orthax, makes its appearance. Vox Machina struggle to battle the demon. Delilah attempts to flee in the chaos, but is killed by Cassandra. Orthax, seemingly satisfied by Delilah's death, retreats to Percy's shadow as a wave of cold comes over him. Stanley casts friends on Percy, convincing him to hand over his pistol, which he then tosses into the acid as well. The cold feeling inside Percy vanishes, freeing him from Orthax in the process. Having saved his home and avenged his family, Percy felt it was best to leave the care of Whitestone and his sister Cassandra's capable hands. The city, both battered and bruised, would recover from the evil reign of the Briarwoods slowly over time. Percy, having dealt with many of his demons, quite literally, began to grow warmer towards those around him. No longer plagued by the need for revenge, Percy, however, still holds some of his self-loathing for many of the horrible things he has done. As well, after his experience with Orthax, Percy has now become adverse and is suspicious of the ways of the arcane, or anything that function in ways he does not understand. The party would regroup in Iman sometime later. A great ceremony would be held in the Cloudtop Districts. Sovereign Uriel Taldore has abdicated his throne, ushering a new era of the Taldore Republic. Suddenly, the professions come to a halt as the city is attacked by four ancient chromatic dragons which call themselves the Chroma Conclave. Vox Machina and the city are defenseless against their ancient power as they're forced to flee to their keep outside the walls as Iman burns. The white, black, and green dragons lead Iman seemingly to find their own sliver of Tal'Dorei to control. Percy would suggest that they take many of the refugees of Iman to Whitestone, which would become the base of operations for the Chroma Conclave resistance. From here, they would return to the holy city of Vasselheim to try and find allies and resources to stop these dragons. They're taken before a gynosphinx named Osissa, an acolyte and keeper of the goddess of knowledge, Ayun. She would inform them that the conclave has spread out east across Taldore and Exandria, destruction being left in their wake, going all the way to the island of Draconia, which they ravaged and destroyed. As well, the party learned of a set of powerful magical items known as the Vestiges of Divergence. But Osissa informs them that they must venture to speak to her mate to learn more about these items. Later in the city, Percy would purchase black powder from an eccentric man named Victor. Victor would tell Percy of another recent buyer of this powder, a finely dressed young woman Percy presumed to be Anna Ripley. The party would visit the Temple of Kord in Vasselheim. There, Grog would undergo a test from one Earthbreaker Groon. 
Once Grog passed the test, he informed the party he knew of these powerful items, the vestiges. One, a set of great knuckles made by Cord out of the heart of an Earth primordial known as the Titanstone Knuckles. And two, a set of black leather armor made by the goddess of death, the Raven Queen, called Deathwalker's Ward. For all the information you could want on some of these crazy items, make sure you check out our vestiges of the Divergence Explained video. Grun informs them that while he doesn't know where the knuckles are, the armor can be found in the Champion of the Raven Queen's tomb underneath the lake known as the Marrowglade Lock. There they would fight a beholder who I guess decided to make this tomb his home. After defeating the creature, they would open the tomb of Pervon Sewell, revealing a long dead skeleton wearing a set of black studded leather trend armor with raven feathers. Percy, in his haste and excitement, begins removing the armor from the sarcophagus. As he does so, he notices something isn't quite right. He manages to pull away in time as a blast of death energy erupts from the armor, hitting and killing Vex instantly. From here, the group would attempt a ritual of resurrection, Vax making a bargain with the goddess of death herself to give his life in exchange for his sisters, to which the goddess accepted. Back in Whitestone, Percy, feeling horrible for his actions, informs Vax that it was his carelessness that was responsible for Vex dying, and that he wouldn't be able to live with himself if she weren't alive. The two managed to set aside some of their differences, seemingly over their love for Vexalia, as up until this point, Percy and Vex have slowly been developing a romantic and flirty relationship. Sometime later, the party visit Osis' mate. After passing its test, the Sphinx awards them with the Vestige Myth Carver, as well as the location of six of the other Vestiges of the Divergence. From here, they make their way to the city of Westrun, which is now under the control of the Black Dragon Umbrasil, accompanied by a horde of barbarians, led by Grog's uncle Kevdak. Vox Machina would defeat this barbarian leader Kevdak, claiming his vestiges, the Titanstone Knuckles, in the process. The party rallied the villagers and some of the barbarians heard to fight against the Black Dragon Umbrasil. Percy designs a large spring-loaded trap, similar to a bear trap, to use to hold the Umbrasil on the ground. The party set an ambush, putting the tribute to the dragon beneath this trap, and then laying in wait. The trap actually works, but eventually the dragon breaks free, flying off to its lair with Grog, Vax, and Scanlan in tow, the group eventually hunting it down and slaying it in his horde. The group would again return to Vasselheim. Pierre Percy would construct a prosthetic hand for his eccentric friend Victor, as well he would visit the Raven's Quest Temple of the Raven Queen. Inside, he would hear a voice call to him from a pool of blood, telling him to have faith and step inside. He does so, his lungs filling with the blood, his eyes opening, seeing the porcelain face of the Raven Queen. The goddess reassures Percy, saying that all mortals are broken things, but it's the process in which we better ourselves that give us meaning. Damn, that's super freaking deep. Percy would have a shrine constructed to the Raven Queen in Whitestone in order to honor Vaxeldon. The group head to the Feywild in order to gather more allies in the elven city of Syngorn and hunt another vestige. Here, Percy bestows the title of Baroness and Grand Mistress of the Hunt of Whitestone onto Vexalia. As well, after a great struggle, they claim the bow Fenthrith from an archfey named Sondor. From here, they would travel to the city of Ankarel in the dry desert continent of Marquette in search of a vestige known as Cabal's Ruin. They discovered that the former owner of Cabal's Ruin had been recently murdered, her body showing bullet hole wounds. The group realized that this must have been the work of Anna Ripley, whom has been spying on them through Animus, the pistol that Percy had took from her. They scry on Ripley, determining that she is also hunting vestiges, as it looks as though she's trying to find the dagger known as Whisper. They track her and her followers down to the Isle of Glass, where they set an ambush for her. Once the trap is sprung on Ripley, she looks to Percy, telling him she already has sold six firearms with the instructions on how to make more, so he'll have to live with the knowledge knowing his creation will be the cause of so much death. Battle begins, it's revealed in the battle that Ripley herself has made a bargain with the Shadow Demon Orthax, her new powers and items making for an intense fight. At one point, Percy takes a number of shots from Ripley as he falls dead. He's enveloped by healing magic from a necklace Pike has gave him, restoring him back to life. Percy would tell Ripley that he forgave her for everything, but that he had to stop her. However, this did not last long though, as Percy, still hurt, is attacked by Orthax, knocking him unconscious as Ripley steps forward, shooting his unconscious body, a name disappearing off the barrel of her gun, as Percy lies dead in the jungle. Damn, Percy. Let me tell you, this dude dies like at least six times over the course of Vox Machina's campaign. I actually didn't realize that. In a rage at the death of their comrade, Vox Machina brutally finish off Dr. Ripley. The next day, they teleport back to Whitestone to have Pike perform a ritual resurrection. However, the ritual is being blocked as Orthax is feasting on Percy's soul. They cast Greater Restoration on the pistol, freeing Percy's soul as the holy magic restores him back to life. Vexalia in tears tells him, I should have told you it's yours, referring to her heart as she declares her love for him. 
Over the next few days, the party plan to defeat Vorigal, the White Dragon, when they are approached by the Green Dragon Raishan, who proposes an alliance to take down Thordak, the Cinder King, the Great Red Ancient Dragon, who has become corrupted with elemental power. They would defeat the White Dragon Vorigal with the help of Raishan and a summoned Gurishro named Yank, claiming another vestige, the Spire of Conflux, in the process. The party would make an eventful trip to the City of Brass in the Plane of Fire to recover yet another vestige, the Plate of the Dawn Martyr, saving a pair of Asimar children in the process. As they return back to Fort Daxio, they find that they have taken too much time. Fort Daxio is under siege from Fordax minions. They successfully hold off against the attack, but the fort takes some losses. They learn that Thordak has gone completely mad, burrowing himself into the Cloudtop District. They decide it's time they take their city back, preparing the Siege of Amon for the following day. Chaos rings out on the streets of Amon, a great battle of Thordak's minions against the Alliance of Tal'Dorei. The battle has bought enough time for Vox Machina to push their way into the Cloudtop District and Thordak's crater. Before them stands an unnaturally huge ancient red dragon. The battle is long and hard fought, eventually Vox Machina and their allies pushing the dragon to flee deep within his lair. The dragon was not fast enough though as the blade of the champion of the Raven Queen Vaxel Dawn struck him down. Then the party would turn on the green dragon Raishan, not wanting her to gain Thordak's memories. They would chase her deep into the crater, finding a number of red dragon eggs waiting there. Raishan would engage the party, and a dangerous fight would break out, as Raishan repeatedly cast high-level spells and used her poison its breath on the party, eventually killing Vex and Scanlan mid-fight. In the chaos, Raishan would escape with two dragon eggs and the body of Thordak. The party would gather themselves, tracking her down to her lair, where they would again engage her in combat. The battle would be hard fought, Percy and Scanlan both falling dead again to the Green Dragon, though she eventually would fall to the rest of the party. Besides one minor trip to the, to the Hells, Percy would spend most of this time establishing the Chamber of Whitestone to rule in lieu of the royal family. As well, he would spend much of the year in his workshop with Terry and Darrington, creating new glasses, automating the production of shot and powder, and modernizing Whitestone. However, there is no rest for the wicked. After a year had passed, the party would learn of a second ziggurat hidden in Marquette. They investigated, uncovering a group of Vecna cultists and another orb of annihilation. Fox Machina would engage these cultists as one looks on, revealed to be Delilah Briarwood back from the dead. As her cultists are slain, Delilah walks forward to the orb, allowing herself to be sucked inside, which takes her to the Shadowfell. After some research, the group eventually head into the orb, taking them into the Shadowfell. Before them, they see an old city with large towers in the center. Three beams of purple light lead to the tower, presumably siphoning magic from the material plane from the three ziggurats to bring Vecna back. Together, the group sneakily invade the city of Tharamphala, avoiding cultists and creatures of undead as they do. Suddenly, a huge burst of energy rings out, indicating that the ritual is most likely now done. Around them, snow begins to fall as the city has now been teleported to somewhere inside Exandria in a material plane. Vox Machina pushes their way to the top of the tower. There, they face off against Delilah Briarwood, a Death Knight of Vecna, and the Lord of Whispers, Master of Secrets himself, Vecna the Whispered One. They engage the god, but the fight goes horribly wrong. Many of the group are instantly paralyzed. Vex falls to a Power Word kill. Grog gets banished to the Shadowfell, while Vax eats a disintegration spell, his body disappearing to ash. Percy does manage to kill Delilah, while Pike revives Vex and the banishment spell on Grog is broken. The group then plane shift out that bit to the Feywild, knowing they were greatly outmaxed. Vax would return to life, being granted the form of a revenant by his goddess, the Raven Queen. From here, the party would pass the Divine Gate, heading to Elysium to speak to the gods on the nature of killing or trapping a god. The goddess Ayun, impressed by Percy's ingenuity, explained to him her knowledge of the Prime Trammels, a tool of the gods that could be used to banish a god. The group would finish construction of these trammels at some point in Elysium. Percy would reveal to the group that he and Vexalia were engaged to be married. Having gathered their power and allies, Vox Machina strike out to find Vecna's city. They discover to their horror that he has somehow reanimated a fallen Earth primordial. In the primordial, they encounter a dragonborn paladin, a former ally named Archon, who has unfinished business with Vecna and the Briarwoods. They team up, attacking the revived Lord and Lady Briarwood atop their undead dragon. Lila is killed, but Silas managed to escape again in his vampire misform. The party tushed together for one final assault against this god. Through much struggle and many close calls, they managed to damage Vecna, inserting the prime trammels and casting the ritual to banish him once more behind the divine gate. This would be the end of the journey of Vox Machina. The group afterwards would scatter, attending to their personal needs. 
First again, Vexalia would be married, the now the Lord and Lady of Whitestone, in a small deech town called Dalen's Closet. There, the wedding would be attacked by Silas Briarwood and his minions, who survived the Vecna encounter. The couple were bound with change and thrown into the ocean. Ultimately, they were saved, though, and Silas was destroyed. They would then bear four children, the last of which was born a tiefling due to Percy's deal with a devil. Percy would retire from public life after the fall of Vecna, focusing on his duties in his city. Over time, he would create a number of technical wonders for Whitestone, such as Streetlands and Whitestone Skyport. Percy and his wife Vex, along with their children, still reside in Whitestone to this day, ensuring the protection of this city and Taldore. Yeah, that's it for the life and story of Percy Dorolo. Percy's personal character stories of the Briarwoods really is awesome. It's one of the first times I had seen a DM thoroughly integrate backstory into their campaign, and I was immediately smitten by it. Talison is a mad genius coming up with these crazy, dark, edgy characters with such an interesting story. As always, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know the other moments from the life of Percy DeRolo that I miss in the comments below. Obviously, we couldn't include everything that happened over the hundreds of hours of D&D goodness on the Critical Role channel. But I did my best to hit the major story beats as well as to dissect Percy's personal arc with the Briarwoods. But obviously we couldn't get everything. So let me know your favorite Percy DeRolo moment in the comments down below. Dude has some of the best one-liners in all of Critical Role history. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you guys again for watching my videos. It means a lot. I know this video was a little longer than a lot of our other content. Uh, I plan on doing this with all of the player characters in critical role in some capacity so keep your eye out for those videos in the future as always guys if you enjoyed the video learn something new make sure you like comment and subscribe stay safe out there i hope to see you in the next one peace love i'll do